I was a huge fan of the first two films. You know, it was actually my mom who sent me an email back in 2015 saying that she was excited about this new movie, John Wick, coming out with Keanu, who she and I both love for, you know, the myriad of roles that he's had in a very incredible career. And, um, and so I loved the first two. And then when I got the call that Chad wanted to meet me and I met him and we clicked right away. I mean, I said yes before even reading the script, which I think you did too, I right? did the same thing. Yeah. Yes, and, yeah. and my wife had seen one and two before I did. And she's not even an action fan. Mm -hmm. And she loved the movies and, and told me that I would too. And I did. Mm -hmm. And so when I got the call, the same thing. Before I even read the script, I said, yes, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs>I mean, I, I had heard that he was incredibly kind, incredibly gracious, incredibly hardworking. You know, he's going to show up more prepared than everyone else, and so he's really raising the bar. And all of that is true. I think someone like Keanu, who has such a, um, a reputation, yes. a good reputation yes. around him, but also this air, I think, that could be very intimidating, that's put on him by other people. It could be easy to be intimidated by him when you meet him except that he is so humble, kind, gracious, vulnerable, intelligent, and he enters a room as himself, as that person. And so ultimately you're like, oh my gosh, of course, you're a human being, I'm a human being, and here we are connecting, having a conversation. So yeah, it's all true. <laughs> it's all true. Add to that collaborative mm -hmm. and coming into fight rehearsals on his days off. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, he really led us. Mm -hmm. You know, the John Wick world is a, is a particular aesthetic that's really been created by Chad and Keanu. You know, it's a combination of film noir, but also foreign film, but there's also obviously action, and there's real human drama at the heart of it. You know, John Wick is an emotional, vulnerable character, and Keanu obviously is bringing that to John. And I think audiences can really connect with a real human being who has lost things that are important to him and is doing whatever he can to seek revenge, you know, in the way that he does because he's a trained assassin. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, you know, this, the story is there and Chad and Keanu are so grounded mm -hmm. and open and forward thinking. Yeah. So they're moving with the times mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're bringing the world to the people that don't get a chance to go out. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's really evident from Chad to Keanu that, um, you know, they show up to work and they're not there to mess around. And for me as a performer, like I want, I'm, I'm gonna show up and I'm not that's messing right. around that's either. Right. I'm there to do the work and do the best job that I can. And so I think that's why the projects, the projects are going to attract people who want to do that kind of work. Yeah. yeah. So the adjudicator is there to enforce the binding rules of this, you know, shadowy assassin's uh, world, the high table. And, you know, they play a really crucial role in what happens to John Wick now that he has broken these rules, not only killing a member of the high table, doing it inside the Continental. You know, now he has a $14 million bounty on his head. And because the adjudicator so far is not the one to get their physical hands dirty, you know, they bring in Zero, someone who previously was excommunicated um, from the high table, but is, in the adjudicator's eyes, really the only person who is possibly good enough to stand a chance fighting against John Wick. And so, um, the adjudicator says, Zero, I have a mission for you. Do you accept? Zero says, yes. And then Zero uses his Shinobi Ninja Warriors to help um, go after John Wick. Well, Zero loves John Wick, respects him, looks up to him, is inspired by him. And, you know, that was all on the page. And uh, what was interesting for me is that that's how I feel about Keanu. So I could play that organically. And um, because it is so contrary that, you know, you love the person that you actually want to go out and kill. You know, it, it brings some levity and humor uh, to the story. But that's the fact, is that, yes, I, I honor what I do. I'm going to do what the adju adjudicator, you know, gives me, uh, you know, the, the task at hand. But I also 
love this person. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's, that's what makes it very interesting and funny. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thank you so much to all of the fans for continuing to love and support these films. You know, um, because I know, as Keanu has said, he'll keep making them as long as audiences want to see more of John Wick. And so that's really exciting. You know, without the fans, there there would be, um, there wouldn't be more John Wicks. Right. So uh, I'm really appreciative and grateful to them. And I think that, um, you know, as I said, the one of the reasons that I think audiences love these movies is because of the way in which Keanu portrays John Wick, which is a multi-dimensional, emotional, vulnerable person. Yeah, I mean, Keanu plays him as a real person, as you know, as as we are in real life, mm -hmm. you know, with all these different dimensions and levels. And again, you know, Chad and Keanu, they're forward thinkers. They move with the times, mm -hmm. so we're not held back in, you know, in others, you know, the way mo action movies were. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a it's a real movie with you know, a whole world and diversity. Mm -hmm. I mean, the final mm. fight mm. sequence, which mm. takes place, which you're in, which takes place in this glass house building that was constructed. I imagine on IMAX that will look particularly exciting. Although mm -hmm. really, I feel like the whole movie yeah. is so visually stunning. The colors saturate everything. The sound saturates. It's such a delicious um, movie. And I think that on, honestly, every aspect of it will be enhanced in IMAX. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Dan Lauston, our DOP, is phenomenal, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the, the motorcycle sequence could be yeah. very interesting on IMAX as well. Yeah. 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 I think one of the great things that I love about the first two John Wicks, and this one is no different, is that it's everything that I loved about movies and going to the movies when I was a kid. It's an adrenaline ride from start to finish. You know, you get action, you get humor, you get real human drama. Um, it's visually stunning. It travels all over the world, you know, and and at the heart of it is is this real person who's really in a fight for his life, you know, and, and not only his literal life, but whatever life he might have had that he lost because he lost his wife, his dog, his car, all of these things. Um, and, and I think that the exciting thing about the third film is that we get to um, go deeper into that. And there's a nostalgic experience about watching these films, as I said, because it's everything that I loved as a kid. And I think people of all ages, the experience of going to a theater, the lights going down, sharing that experience with everyone in the room is something that's really special. And I think, you know, John Wick 3 is not gonna disappoint in that arena. Yeah, visually stunning mm -hmm. and, and the sound. As, uh, from what I understand, mm -hmm. every gun mm -hmm. has a different sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's, it's rich and diverse on every single level. Yeah. Hey there, here's today's daily fact. Now, Edward Norton actually punches Jared Leto in the Fight Club. While most of the fighting in the Fight Club was were rehearsed, Edward Norton actually managed to punch Jared Leto in the face during one of the movie's fight scenes. Ed Norton swung a little too wide and knocked me in the chin, admitted Leto. Click here below to subscribe or over here for more great content.